Hello there folks and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today we're going to be doing another free CAD tutorial. And in today's episode we are going to be making three models. As you see on the screen I have a pipe holder which will be holding a pipe that will hold 3D printer filament which will be for another episode I'm um, just designing this for. And of course there is the Z and stop screw mount for my PowerBot 3D printer along with the fan bracket for the PowerBot 3D printer. Uh, that'll be for the hot end fan. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with our pipe holder here first. It's the easiest one. So we'll start out with a sketch X and Y plane as per usual. We'll get out of the blue mode and it's a pretty simple shape we're gonna be making here. Just a uh, an arc to begin with then a line, go ahead and do a line at the bottom as well. Now we're going to be making the main shape here, so essentially there's going to be two uh, parts to this. There's going to be the the uh, like the the plate where the uh, screws line up to, and there's going to be like a lip that actually holds the uh, pipe into place. So, so this is going to be 8.5 half of 17 millimeter, which is our diameter. So we have our basic diameter. Everything else is insanely small. And this is going to be a di uh, has a diameter of 12, which we're going to be doing a radius of six, I'll repeating on the opposite side. So this will be about 33 millimeter diameter, kind of wrecked it a bit, but thankfully, um, since it's not such a weird and complicated shape we're dealing with, not a huge deal. Okay, so let's get some things straightened out here. This is going to be our centerpiece, so I'm going to go ahead and line it up as so and get everything else kind of straightened out as I go. Should have made it a little heck of a lot smaller, I'll tell you that much. Then that's going to be zeroed out. There we go. So these two lines here, they are going to be symmetrical as well, along with these two lines. Never mind. Some bugginess with FreeCAD. I had to constrain properly a couple 180s on the sides on these two circular deals just to even everything out, as well as a couple of symmetry constraints because everything, all this, uh, all this outer shape constrained properly along with this uh, zeroed out uh, course, just our 8.5 millimeter diameter and cut circles. So that is good to go. Now we can go ahead and start plotting some other things out here. I'm going to go ahead and pad this. This will be padded to a height of about four millimeters. And then I'm going to go ahead and just might as well plop in a couple cylinders here. Actually, and we'll delete this one for now. Now we can basically this inner shape, I can make like a pad or I could just do a couple cylinders and cut it out with each other here. I think I'll just do that route. So our radius, so 8.5 plus three, that'll be 11.5. And our height, we want this to be 15 millimeters. You know how I said I was gonna make another cylinder? Yep, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, we're gonna do 15, oh, if it'll actually register. There we go, 15 and then 8.5. Then go back to our, our view here. There we go, good deal. A little rehash on the primitives, oh hey. Easy enough. I think that needs to be 12 anyway. Yeah, at least. And of course, a height of uh, 15. And as long as it just cuts that bit out. Go ahead and get our primitives. We'll group those together. Get our main cylinder deal. Go ahead and uh, do a cut. And there you go. There's our basic shape. And then we have to add in a couple more cylinders for our actual screws here. They're going to go Y about 6. Looks like about negative 6. Yep. The other one we'll just uh, replicate. 16.5 will be our uh, split there. And then of course we need to make the radius 2.5 to account for our M5 screws we'll be using. Okay, there we go. So there's our basic shape here. Pretty, pretty simple little shape. I think at least I'll round these edges off. One millimeter is fine. Yeah, there we go. Cool. That'll be about it for our uh, shape here. So I'll go ahead and save this real quick and cut to the next shape. 
Alrighty folks, now we're gonna go ahead and start with the Z in stop screw mount. Let's go ahead and get started here with a uh, sketch. So X, Y, another thing I have learned, so you see this, uh, line, this thing here, it says create a polyline in this sketch. So essentially what you can do is it just allows you to draw an interrupted series of lines to create a polygon. So I'm gonna draw like a C base, like a C shape deal here. And then attached to that will be an arc. And there's my basic shape there. So as you saw, I you know, just created that those three lines with ease. Didn't have to really like line them up. That's a cool little tip I learned from a uh, somebody in the YouTube comment sections of the last video. I know this is going to be about 20 wide. And this will be 20 as well. Actually 10, sorry. Keep thinking in diameter instead of radius. So our overall length will be 32 millimeter. Of course, we'll subtract 10 from that and we'll get our overall shape here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and lock this one in and zero. Okay, I guess I wanted an angle. So that's our basic shape here. I'm gonna probably uh, fillet these edges on the sides just to reduce a bit of material usage. I'm gonna go ahead and pad that and that is going to be a height of 9.5 millimeter. A bit chunky, but definitely needed for what we're going to be doing here. What we're gonna do is we're going to throw in a couple of cylinders. So that one there, that's exactly where it needs to be. And we just need to up the radius to 2.5. Now, we need to go ahead and we'll just copy that and paste that bad boy. Save ourselves some work. Just control C, control V for those uninitiated. We're gonna have a second bolt hole that'll be 15.25 away, yes. And that'll be on the negative. And this one I'm gonna actually raise the height a little bit on because I'm going to be uh, basically creating like a little guy that'll be sliding along the rail, which will be an additional millimeter in height. Just wanted to toggle the sketch's visibility for this next bit. Okay, so quite simply, I'm just gonna do a cube on this. It'll be nine millimeters in length, or length across this way, and then it'll be one millimeter in height. Actually, technically, we could do about two. I think that'll probably help us out and not make it freak out when we try to uh, do our uh, chamfer. That needs to be 20, that'll be nine. This needs to actually go 9.75. And then of course our Y, that's going to need to be negative 10. And of course our Z height, that is going to be at least, so that'll be at least 8.5. Let's toggle that back, see what we got. Yeah, exactly what we need. And then of course, I need to create a little chamfer on these two edges of about one millimeter. Exactly what I need, and there we go. Now there's one last finishing touch I need to take care of. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle most of this stuff here. And we're gonna go ahead and do a top down, go back to part design, and we're gonna go ahead and make our hexagon. Let's see here, will it let me do this? Oh, so far so good. Okay, am I gonna, yeah. So I think the reason why it was acting so strange last time was because of just the nature of the model and what I was trying to do with it. I'm gonna go ahead and go with like four millimeter. Essentially this is gonna be at the bottom of the model. Reason being is that once I actually uh, get it off the printer, it's gonna be flipped upside down and then the actual nut where it's gonna be held here, I don't want gravity holding that in because that's holding the bolt to the actual printer so yeah if it's just gravity and a bit of glue holding it in i don't really trust it especially with a lot of high temperature application we're dealing with here preferably you you want to go with uh designing your model with little no supports as possible but this was the only way to really get that uh, chamfer in there i'm gonna go ahead and take all of our subtractive elements i'm going to merge these together okay so we got our guys here so there we go, and little uh, finishing touches said I was going to uh, fillet these edges, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and do a little thicker than one, about a two would be good. Perfect. Okay, so we got a little beefier, more improved model. 
The uh, reason I'm doing this is because this little insert will allow it to be stabilized so it won't wobble uh, from left and or back and forth. And the actual nut will allow me to actually, uh, I'm just gonna put like a lock nut in there and of course glue that lock nut in there. So I'll be able to keep the level as well as adjust it on the fly properly without having to loosen nuts, which I was having to do with the old uh, lesser design. So. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one here, and then we'll go ahead and skip to the next model. Alrighty, folks, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the last part of here, our fan brackets. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the uh, sketch on the X and Z plane. We'll start with our um, create a polyline on our sketch. What I could do is just create like a couple of arches and a line and two lines connecting them. However, I, I want to have a flat bottom to print on because it just makes printing without a fan a lot easier. You see, ironically, in order to print off any sort of like fan equipment for your 3D printers, you need a actual fan in order to properly print them without, you know, causing yourself a lot of headache. So it's, it's a bit of like a catch-22 more or less. I'll show a pic picture here real quick of the current fan bracket that has this like a... Uh, has this design where it prints an arch on the bottom. As you can see in the picture, it looks pretty atrocious. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start by making these two lines symmetric. I'm gonna go ahead and zero them out real quick. Do we need to refine these points to point? They're gonna be 17 millimeter. We'll go ahead and uh, trim these guys down. They'll be 17 millimeter as well. Symmetrical. Okay, so those will be four. Not the angle. Oh, yep, that'll be what we want for equal these bad boys. So we have both these defined by zero. Hey, there we go. Okay, so easy as that. Just had to wrestle with everything. Now we'll go ahead and close this bad boy here. And I'm going to go ahead and pat it. It will be a total of nine millimeters and that will be that for now. Now we have to go ahead and make like a couple of center cuts on this design. I'll just go ahead and do a cylinder. I think that'll be fine. I'll go ahead and rotate this bad puppy here. We're going to rotate it on the X axis and not the Z. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, paste it again. I'm going to hide this one for now. It'll be our hole or screw hole cutout. I'll just go ahead and mark the radius 1.5 for our M3 screw. And then this one is going to be radius of about 5 at least. And the height will be 3. Okay, and then our placement position through the Y axis will be 3. Up oh, negative 3. I don't know why it moves so weird, but it does. And then our uh, placement here, the X will be half a 17 8.5 duh I did this before I think that will should be fine so go ahead and copy this as well paste it and then we'll go ahead and group these together and cut them from our pad See, it's easy once you figure out, oh, and a bit of problem here. Um, if we do like 5.5, that give us almost. Okay, so it looks like 5.75 is like the tipping point. So that'll give us plenty of uh, pivoting room in our bracket here. And that's gonna do it for today's free CAD tutorial. I had to make a few small changes after the fact. I had to, uh, for the Z and stop screw mount, I had to flip the nut on the other side, the other screw hole, because I screwed that up. And uh, as for the fan bracket, I had to chamfer the bottom edges in order to allow for more clearance so it can pivot more, as well as actually widening the uh, holes or the cuts in the middle to allow things to insert into them. I had to uh, just change those out to a square and uh, basically put them inwards another millimeter or so. Those were the uh, main changes here. I do want to thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button, consider subscribing, and check out some other videos coming up here soon.